Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup and the Smart Tech Edition. Before we jump on in, I want to remind you of some affiliates. Today, we're talking about Pro Writing Aid. If you are a writer or you need to do better at grammar on emails or whatever else you need to do, and you want something that has always been a privacy respecting company from the beginning, Pro Writing Aid is an excellent service. They do have a lifetime uh, service and you can use my affiliate code just tlm.li forward slash pwa and take 20% off a lifetime fee or you can do the yearly subscription for $63 or the monthly for 20. There are actually a few free options as well if you want to try it out you can go ahead and do that they do have extensions I believe they have an extension for LibreOffice I actually use language tool on mine I use this on my other computer for browser extensions. Um, but it's definitely a, a good service there, and you can use my affiliate link there and get some discounts on their service. Let's go ahead and jump on into the smart tech, and uh, today we have a brief update. Boeing is back in the sky. Uh, I found the most interesting thing I found is that they were flying these around Seattle. I guess they figured, hey, if it crashes, it's just going to crash and burn into a foreign country anyway. That being Chaz. But that was last week. That's all over. So uh, anyway, uh, but yes, Boeing and the FAA have begun a series of test flights on Monday to determine if the 737 MAX is allowed back in the air. So uh, pray for pizza because they're still flying around the Seattle airspace. Um, that's exciting. So anyway, um, we'll kind of see if uh, they're going to go or if they're going to go or not. So uh, anyway, Disney, they have their new face swap technology. This is interesting. I'm curious to know your thoughts. Uh, what do you think about this? So the idea is you can just take any random old actor or just, hey, computer generated stuff anyway. And uh, you can just go ahead and basically put somebody else's face over things. So you can kind of see how they're changing and morphing faces, different nose styles, eyes, you know, mouth styles, a lot of different things. Um, they're keeping, in this case, the hairstyles the same. Now, the idea is that you can, you can basically put some in a movie that wasn't there. So there's some things like editing Carrie Fisher into the spot, into some of the spots in Leia in Rise of uh, Skywalker. I completely understand that application, but resurrecting the image of James Dean, an actor who died a long, long time ago to star in a brand new role is going uh, way over the line. This isn't a little over the line. This is way over the line. This is a holy crap. Get way off that line measure. So holy crap. What's going on here? So the idea here and what I fear is going to go on is we're going to see the same type of thing we're seeing in technology. You know, you take your social media, you really only have a small handful of them. And everything that's not that small handful is simply the places for white right wing extremists and, and white nationalists to hang out on. So nobody will ever use them anyway, because therefore nothing can ever grow except the guys already in the top. You have your big corporations. We only have a couple computer companies at the top. Try breaking into it. Almost impossible. ISPs, try breaking into it. Almost impossible. Now this is going to allow a few key actors to be in everything, and that's it. Sorry, we don't want to hire any new actors. We're just going to keep on resurrecting the same guy that died years and years ago and just keep on paying the estate of which we now own most of the majority stake in anyway. That's the fear that I start to see coming around in this. So what do you guys think? Is this face swap technology impressive or is it... Is it bad news for the industry? Let me know your thoughts on that one particularly. I, I'm kind of curious to know. All right. Consumer Reports analysis claims that modern safety techs could cut the road deaths in half if they all became standard. Like, you know, the, the Tesla's autopilot that likes to accelerate into the back of fire engines, police cars, and divider strips. But uh, there's all of these different smart tech things they want to implement in that I'm not all that interested in seeing implemented into our society. I do not want to be driving down the interstate, have a sensor go haywire, the car thinks there's something on the road, and so it slams on the brakes. That is what will happen because we're seeing all these, oh, this is an amazing system. It does auto braking stuff when it senses there. And they always have, you know, you always have the, the mom in the mini 
minivan with the children and she looks back to yell at her kids and the car stops for her and it's all safe. Well, that's fine and dandy when your car's brand new. What happens when your car is 10 years old and the sensors are starting to fade out and the sensor has no idea what's going on and the sensor's just like, hey, I think there's something there. Ah! And it slams on the brakes at 65 miles an hour on the interstate in front of nothing but the semi behind you barrels into you because you suddenly slammed on the brakes. That's the danger of this. This is insanity. Apparently, I just hit my goal. My watch is yelling at me that I hit my goal. So apparently doing this causes me to... Do, I feel like like Philip DeFranco, isn't he famous for his hands? I don't know. Anyway, uh, that being said, that <laughs> being said indeed, they want to implement all these various safety, safety. What types of things? Vehicle to vehicle um, communication, AKA, we got to have 5G everywhere in every car, always on the internet, always broadcasting itself complete, completely and per been perplexedly. We want to have blind spot warning and pedestrian detection systems. My favorite was, well, I think it was Google, like Google's Waymo, I think it was, patented the, the, the glue coating where if the car hit somebody, they would stick to the car instead of hitting and bouncing off. That was fun. You guys remember seeing that patent? That's like four or five years ago. But the idea is that the science behind that is you, you know, you have multiple impacts. If a car hits a pedestrian, the pedestrian hits it and then flies off and causes more damage. So Google's like, well, if we just make our car so that the car goes by, hits somebody and they stick to it, it cuts back on some of the damage. You know, they won't fall off, roll over and get run over. They won't fall and bounce off and hit their head on the pavement. They'll just stick to it like a bug on flypaper. Anyway, um, emergency braking, lane departure warning, blind spot warning, pedestrian detection systems, an additional 1,300 lives could be saved. But don't worry, a pandemic's going to kill all those lives anyway. Don't worry. Come on. So, <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you want all this smart tech in your cars? Or do you want to be like, no, I'll take on the risk. Thank you. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know. All right. Uh, too simple. This is just too simple. This is like, who's coming up with these names? But Too Simple is laying the groundwork for a coast-to-coast -coast autonomous truck driving network. Did anybody else see Duel? That's what I'm picturing here. Duel, right? So, we have all these semi-trucks. You know, the semi-trucks, if there's a little whoopsie in this network, if a hacker gets in and you know, messes around. Like, do you realize that that all of the cars on the road next to semis are like cans of sardines? The semi hits them, it's just toast. Imagine getting a, a hacker getting access to this network where, you know, the autonomous truck driving network. Yeah, what about all of the truck drivers too, by the way? And so the truck drivers, of course, oh yeah, they're sitting there. They're, they're sitting there paying attention in the road, waiting for nothing and helping to deliver the stuff when it comes out. Yeah. No, if you do that and you take away all responsibility but watch the road, it's going to be about five minutes before they're on their phone checking their email and then playing video games and such. All right? I mean, you can just kind of ask the Uber um, autonomous car guys over there in, it was at Mesa, Arizona, you know, running into people because it's too boring of a job. But then a hacker gets into this thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're just going to take over all the semis. That's, that, there's a, there's a sci-fi novel for your uh, horror, right? So, uh, Too Simple is joining forces with big logistics providers as it seeks to bolster its delivery capabilities. The company announced it will be working with UPS Express Enterprises, Penske Truck Leasing, Berkshire Hathaway-owned grocery and service deliverer McLean to lay a foundation for a coast-to-coast -coast autonomous truck network. Oh, joy. That's all we need. All we need. More uh, more people losing their jobs to big tech. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, indeed. All right. Detroit police chief says uh, tells police that there's a 96% error rate among facial recognition. By the way, the same police department just arrested somebody on nothing more than the computer saying he's the guy. I end up being completely innocent, but... Uh, yeah, after this com comes out, you know, they're saying, oh, no, 90, 95 to 97 is what he says here. Uh, you know, these things are extremely inaccurate. This is why, like, use good old-fashioned police work. Don't rely on this kind of stuff. You know, pay your police officers a, a decent wage to, you know, get whatever, get whatever they need to get. But, 
I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know. And on to our feature story today. Microsoft and Bridgestone launch a real-time tire damaging system. It will also log where the road damage happened. So, yeah, not only do you have sensors in your tires, but now this is going to be tied into some GPS capabilities with Microsoft. And so the car diagnostic system, perpetually connected to Microsoft servers, of course, is going to be collecting all the information. And as soon as it detects tire damage, there's a ping in the GPS network. It knows exactly what it is. And so, yeah, the connected vehicle platform to identify tire damage in real time and uses algorithms to detect events that affect the tire surface. System uses MCVP's cloud framework and sensor data from existing hardware that's already installed, so it'll work without any extra kit or necessary retrofitting. As well as detecting damage as it happens, the system also identifies where the damage happened, which gives road authorities the heads up on potholes and other hazards in the future. It could also be a useful addition to autonomous vehicle technology, allowing vehicles to share information about nearby road hazards. This kind of hazard alert system has been floated before. The Jaguar Land Rover hypothesized a similar initiative a while back, but Bridgestone and Microsoft's Endeavor marks the first rollout of its kind. Tire damage contributes to 30% of all accidents. You know, use fear to um, consume that. You know, oh, Lord, this is insane. Um, yeah, uh, that's all I need. I need my car tire sensors automatically constantly connected and serving information from Microsoft servers. No, thank you. If there's a big enough pothole, I think that somebody's going to find it. All right. There's actually people hired by the city to go around looking for those. Just an FYI. Um, we don't need all this information from Microsoft. Let me know, though, your thoughts about those stories down there in the comments. Thank you for the supporters and the patrons that help keep this channel alive. And uh, we will see you guys next time.